Hi, Ethan here. Do you know about the suffix such as uh, IT or TION or SION? When we add those suffixes into an adjective or a verb, we have a noun. And a practice of changing a sentence with a lot of verb and adjective into a sentence with a lot of noun like that, we call it normalization. Although normalization is a good way to uh, deliver abstract concept or well, you know, to show you are intellectual, abusing it, using it too much may have an adverse effect on your writing and your speaking. Today we're gonna study a verb that gonna help us to avoid the situation of using now too much. For example, when we write an IELTS writing test too, we often start our topic sentence with some um, noun like there's no doubt that or an adjective like it is hard to deny that or when we end our essay with a conclusion, we often say in conclusion in summary, in shock, in pr Now, today we're gonna study a word that helps us to avoid that kind of writing style. The word that I'm selling to you guys is advocate. Advocate can be both a verb and a noun. When it means a verb, it means publicly support or suggest an idea, a development or something. Remember, huh? Support or suggest? publicly. But when it means a noun, it means a lawyer. But we will not look at this meaning a lot. We will look at another meaning, a supporter for something, a supporter for an idea or a development or something. But hold on, advocate, it is used quite frequently. Long Man Dictionary says so. So is it advisable to use it? Well, it is, even though it is quite frequently used, advocate is actually a C1 or C2 word. That is to say, it is quite formal. Enough of that. Let's look at some examples, shall we? I will give you some example of advocate as a verb first. The extremists are advocating violence. Others are still advocating genetic engineering of plants and animals. Okay, that's some example of using advocate as a verb. Now, using advocate as a noun. I'm trying to be an advocate of peace. Easy, right? Advocates of something. Now that is the um, pronunciation and the meaning of the word advocate. Now using it in IELTS writing task 2 and speaking part 3 is a great potential. Now let's have a look at the speaking first. Now how can I use advocate in IELTS speaking? Remember in IELTS speaking we have to discuss something, right? And in order to express an idea we have to have some kind of signal. Besides I think and I believe, and obviously everybody knows about that, we can say as a consistent advocate of women's rights, I suggest letting women do whatever they feel pleased. So instead of saying I think, we can say as a consistent advocate of something. Like if they ask me about the benefit of listening to music, then I can say as a consistent advocate of music. Now in some cases, we have to give an opinion but not too directly, so that we can avoid being too subjective, right? Then you can use a phrase, Although I don't exactly advocate same-sex marriage, I don't think people should be against it. As you can see here, I have a dependent clause using although, although I don't exactly advocate something, I still don't think blah blah blah. Right, this is also a good way, in my opinion, to express your idea in IELTS speaking part 3. In IELTS writing task too, sometimes, no, not sometimes, but always, usually is the case that we have to give topic sentence, right? Instead of using there's no doubt or it is hard to deny, you can say, the advocate of study abroad believe that this practice can be conducive to their employment prospect. So you can say the advocate of, and then give a topic, believe that, and then you give your topic sentence after the word that. Is it enough? I think so. Now how about conclusion? We usually say in conclusion, uh, in summary, right? Instead, we can say dimension supporting ideas can advocate a conclusion that. Although we still have the word conclusion, this one sounds, in my opinion, less cliche. And that is the pronunciation, the meaning, and some example of using the word advocate in our writing and speaking.
Okay, before we leave, let me reiterate that using nail in a sentence is not a bad thing at all. In fact, when you deal with IELTS writing test 2 or IELTS speaking part 3, it is good to use a lot of nails in our sentences. However, it is advisable that everybody adopt a flexible writing style in order to make our essay more interesting as well as convey the idea, the fact that we convey the idea becomes more understandable. Alright, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I thank you for being an advocate of this project fancy. And I hope that next week we'll still be seeing one another.